Mark, thanks so much for your time. You have managed to increase profits at a time when revenue and also production has declined. I'm interested in finding out which costs you nipped in the bud to ensure you continue to boost the bottom line. So the, the, the real driver behind the profitability is, uh, is the increased production on, uh, at Kibali, um, driven by a grade, improved grade, as we increase the uh, percentage of underground ore, which is higher grade ore. And so with higher grade, become, you get lower cost per ounce and better revenues. And the same trend in Lulo from Cotto, where we showed a 16% increase in production on the back of better grade, and as a consequence, a 16% drop in in costs. And so, you know, with uh, with uh, better production, uh, more ounces uh, per ton, uh, your costs come down. And as Rand Gold is famous for, uh, when we uh, when we deliver profits, we also increase cash flow. And so you've seen you know profits down materially, and uh, and uh, the net cash balance significantly up on last quarter. Right. Of course, your third quarter numbers are being overshadowed by that all-important shareholder vote tomorrow where your shareholders will get to either give the yay or nay to your uh, proposed merger with Barrack Gold. We have seen their shareholders overwhelmingly approve of this deal. Why should Rand Gold shareholders do the same? Oh, <laughs> I mean, you've seen this transaction. It's a in every sense, a transformational transaction. Uh, it's been supported, well supported across the market. Uh, you know, Rand Gold uh, share price is again up today, and uh, and I don't see any reason why the uh, shareholders will not support uh, you know the this transaction tomorrow. All right, uh, let's uh, bring the focus on to the continent. Uh, what is your outlook for Africa as it stands? I mean, there was a bit of uh, disturbance regarding labor disputes in the, the Ivory Coasts. How do you view mining on the continent, uh, let's say, a year view? You know, I think the, the, the continent is evolving, particularly sub-Saharan Africa. And, uh, you know, I think this transaction really does recognize the importance of investment into Africa. This is not a departure from Africa, but it's a transaction that reinforces the importance of the sub-Saharan region as a destination to find world-class assets. The combination, the, the new barrack uh, merger with Rand Gold Resources, is uh, it, what it delivers is a portfolio of you know, 50% of the top 10 gold deposits in the world, of which two are contributed by Rand Gold Resources and three by Barrick. It also has visibility of additional opportunities to add to that portfolio of Tier 1 assets, and we define Tier 1 assets as gold mines that have more than 10 years capable of producing more than half a million ounces a year for those 10 years at the bottom half of the cash cost curve. And, uh, you know, Africa is definitely a destination that can deliver more of those types of gold mines. What about South Africa? What is your view on, on South Africa now that it uh, looks like mining regulation and policy has somehow uh, been improved for most mining companies? Would you consider in the long term uh, putting some skin in the game here in South Africa? So South Africa has really, you know, been through a period where it hasn't been friendly towards mining capital, um, and it's really, uh, you know, uh, uh, driven a, a sort of harvesting strategy as far as mining goes. And so it's gone a long way to go to be able to demonstrate that it is genuinely, you know, constructive and and it, and it wants to attract uh, and, and be a safe place for capital investments, particularly in the mining industry, which is a long-term uh, business that requires, you know, long-term uh, commitments. 
Uh, on gold itself, you know, uh, South Africa is largely a mature uh, destination, and uh, and and for for land gold resources, and and now the new barracks, we're very focused on tier one assets, world class, uh, top quality assets, and uh, you know the opportunities to to generate because there's none, uh, there are no such assets available today in South Africa, so you would have to be confident you could generate something like that through exploration. And we feel that there's probably more prospective parts of Africa than South Africa. Right. And just uh, finally, Mark, the conversation on the continent right now is increasing the level of uh, beneficiation of uh, resources and uh, you know cutting down on costs regarding importing the the minerals that uh, come from African soil w what is what is your view on, on on beneficiation and perhaps some advice for our policymakers as to the best way to to go about doing it for for business yeah so it's very difficult to justify you know beneficiation for beneficiation sake I think what what is important is the sub-Saharan African region needs to attract more capital investment and develop its infrastructure. You know, certainly got, for instance, huge potential to deliver affordable or low-cost power. And uh, you know, power and infrastructure are the very uh, basis for um, uh, beneficiation. And you know, uh, and so that's really where. My, and, and what we try and encourage all the time is, uh, you know, if you want to demand that sort of beneficiation, it's very important that our uh, sub-Saharan African region focuses on uh, infrastructural deve development and then and, and, and partners with the mining industry to ensure that that, because the mining industry will invest that sort of infrastructure if it was comfortable again with uh, the uh, fiscal parameters on which you were able to invest that uh, capital. So I think that's the next phase of, of Africa is, is you know that you know we've seen the early stage mining development. Uh, we we need to continue to de to roll out the infrastructure as you've seen Rand Gold has been a big participant in DRC and putting in hydropower schemes and so on and and that needs to be encouraged. And I, and I, you know, I'm a great believer in, in the future of sub-Saharan Africa. It's got, you know, it's got enormous natural resource potential. It's got significant human resource potential. Mark, and uh, and and with a you know limited amount of long-term capital, you'll be able to unlock the uh, the very infrastructure required to be able to maximize those natural resource contributions to the economy. A great advice there. Thanks, Mark. We will leave it there. That was Mark Bristow, who is the CEO of Rand Gold uh, Resources.